The chain on your e-mountain bike is probably one of the most vital components to be looking after. Properly cleaning and lubing it before and after every ride is going to make it last a lot longer and also the components around it. So today we're taking a look at everything to do with keeping on top of that chain. So chain care is pretty simple really. It's all about using the right amount of lube, using the correct lube for the conditions that you're riding in and just keeping it nice and clean. So I've got my dirty Canyon Spectral on here. The chain is looking a bit grubby. So let's get through the process and get this chain spanking and ready for my next ride. So the tools we're gonna need for today's cleanup is gonna be a chain cleaner in either a spray or fluid form, a chain bath, a stiff brush or a drivetrain cleaning brush, e-bike drivetrain lube tool, clean rag or microfiber cloth, chain lube, either dry or wet lube, and quick link pliers. Right, so that's the tool sorted. Something else that is gonna make your life a lot easier is gonna to be to use a work stand, meaning you can pedal your bike around super easy with that back wheel off the floor. Now, if you're doing this on the floor, you're actually gonna need something that's gonna be able to uh, jam your chainring whilst you pedal it backwards. Because on an e-bike, when you pedal it back, you're not able to because of that front free wheel in the motor. So this tool literally jams into the uh, chainring bolts, locks against your crank arm, and will allow you to pedal your bike back as per a standard mountain bike. Now, a tool that I really love for cleaning my chain is a chain bath. Now, these really make it as clean as it possibly can be. All you need to do is put some drivetrain cleaner into the chain bath, clip it over your chain, then cycle your cranks around. Now, the chain is gonna pass through a series of brushes and the cleaner, and hey, bingo, you get a nice clean chain without a load of mess. A few other options here, you can go old school and actually coat your chain with some degreaser, get a brush on there and get into the nitty gritty of getting that chain nice and clean. Or you can use a spray chain cleaner too. Now these are really good. You just gotta be careful that you don't go contaminating your pads or do a great job of cleaning your chain. But my favorite is definitely the chain bath. Right, chain clean time. And before I get the chain bath onto my chain, I'm actually gonna make sure that I'm in a mid kind of gear. Just make sure that a chain line is gonna be better because there is a bit of friction when you've got that chain bath going. And if you're in the extremes of the gears, you could end up just making a lot of noise and that chain not running very smoothly. So good one, probably like fifth gear, something like that if you're on 10 speed, just in the middle of the cassette. Just adds a bit more tension to the chain too. Stop that and let's get this chain bath into place. So handle fa facing outwards. Guide the chain in, get the top of the bath into place too. Got a little lock lever on this one, so you push that on and that leaves the actual uh, chain bath locked onto the chain. Now we're just gonna fill the chain bath up with some uh, chain cleaner. Now this one's got a nice little dispenser as well, so I'm just gonna add a bit of that in there. Not loads, you can obviously add more as you go. So nice firm grip on this and then you can simply cycle the chain round. Just go careful not to get it on your tire or too close to the jockey wheels in the rear mech because of course that picks up, it's gonna jam your chain. So you're gonna cycle that round. And the great thing about this is that you can actually see all that horrible gunk dripping down into the bottom of the collection tank as well. So you can see it's doing its magic. Chain cleaner is getting on there nicely. So I'm just gonna dump a bit more in. You really don't want to be getting loads of chain cleaner on there because it's just gonna end up dripping all over your bike. So less is definitely more in the case when it comes to chain cleaner. Right, that's the chain cleaner applied nicely to the chain and it is coated liberally all over. So whilst it does its magic, I'm just gonna go around the other components on the bike and give them a bit of a spruce up too. The jockey wheels on the derailleur and of course getting all that gunk out my cassette and giving that chain ring a bit of loving too. So. And the idea of this is that it doesn't dirty up your nice clean chain once you start pedaling. So depending on how stubborn your dirt is and the oil built up on your components, you can obviously add a little bit more drivetrain cleaner to that whole thing. Just get working in there. Just get it nice and fresh, just like it was when it left the factory. There's some stubborn stuff on this one, that's for sure. Now, once you're happy, your chain is nice and clean, you need to get rid of the degreaser off of your chain. Now, some 
actual degreasers are waterless options, meaning that you don't actually have to rinse it off, it simply evaporates. But this one, I am gonna need to get my chain wet to make sure all that degreaser is removed. And this is definitely a real vital step because if you go applying lube to degreaser, you kind of guess what happens. It's gonna get degreased pretty quickly and you won't have any lube on your chain. Right, the easiest way to get rid of this degreaser is just to simply wipe around the chain for a rag. Just get that excess off and I'm gonna whip the chain off the bike, go and run it under the tap just to make sure every single little bit of degreaser is removed. So you need to find your quick link on your chain. So I'm just cycling this round. It's a link that looks a little bit different than the rest of them. You can see it's got a joining surface and this is where we use these amazing tools called the quick link pliers. Right, so these quick link pliers just slide into your chain, oppose each side, and then just give them a quick click together, and that way your chain link is gonna fall apart. There's two parts of this, obviously the front and the back, and most of these are single use only, so you are gonna need a fresh one when it comes to rejoining your chain. Right, so that's a part, I'm gonna unthread it, and then just go rinse it under the tap, making sure that degreaser is all removed. Right, so I've just rinsed my chain under the tap to make sure that I've got rid of all that degreaser off of it. So you really need to make sure your chain is definitely nice and dry because if you go applying lube to a wet chain, all you're gonna do is lock in that moisture into the rollers and literally rust it from the inside out. So a couple of options here, obviously a nice dry rag or absorbent towel is gonna get the water out of it, water dispersing spray, or even I've heard of people using leaf blowers and compressed air to make sure that chain is definitely nice and dry. So just spend a bit of time doing this, really is worthwhile. Right, so now it's time to put the chain back on the bike and there's a few key things you definitely don't want to mess up with this. If you're using a Shimano chain, you're gonna notice that the logos are only printed on one side. This is to make sure you fit it to your bike uh, properly. So make sure those logos are facing outwards when you fit it. If you put it on the other way around, your chain is not gonna be loving it. So I'm just gonna thread this back through the derailleur, around the cassette, back onto the chain ring and then join it back up with a new quick link. Right now it's time just to join this quick link up. So gonna have a bit of tension in the system from the clutch in your derailleur. Obviously if you've got a SRAM one, you can lock it off with that padlock function. But with the Shimano one, I've just turned off the clutch. Now this to join, all I'm gonna do is slightly pedal it to get it to the top of the chain ring. So once it gets around to the top up onto this bit, you can hear it jump a little bit. It's not fully engaged, but if you hold the back wheel, push the cranks down, you'll hear it engage and that is fully locked nice and home. Right, so before I add the lube to the chain, let's just chat a little bit about the lubes that you can use for your e-mountain bike. And it can become quite confusing. You can have wet and dry lubes. You can have e-bike specific lubes. You can have chain wax and of course, spray on chain oil too. So lots of different options, but I like to use wet and dry lubes, obviously dependent on conditions. Wet lube is gonna be for those wet rides and it means that that chain oil is simply gonna to cling to the chain a lot better, especially when you hit big puddles or it starts raining, this stuff won't wash off your chain. But if you're riding in dry conditions, you definitely want dry lube. This applies to your chain, then it evaporates, leaving a chain that isn't gonna attract a load of dust and debris to it, making it a big sticky mess. And when it comes to applying lube to your chain, you have a couple of options, you have the spray, or the dropper bottle. Now I tend to favor a dropper bottle. You can be a lot more precise with this and you're not gonna get that dreaded overspray that you can do with a, chain, uh, with a chain spray. If you are using a chain spray, you definitely need to apply this at the front of the bike near to the motor to avoid it drifting all over your bike and getting those uh, disc brakes contaminated. Keep your e-bike running smoothly all year. I suggest that you have two different types of lubes, dry lube for the summer and wet lube for those horrible wintry conditions. Right, so that's the lube sorted. Now it's time to apply the lube to the chain itself. Now, there is a few mistakes here. It's not as simple as you think. And the classic that I see is people applying lube to the top side of their chain whilst they're cycling it around. Now, all this is gonna do is when it gets to the bottom, it's gonna fall away from the chain. And the other thing is that the outside of the chain is gonna become a real sticky mess attracting all that trail debris. So what you really need to do is get inside the chain, lube the inside of the chain, the part that actually contacts the chain ring and the cassette as it goes round. That way it's gonna really penetrate those rollers nice and easily. So just cycle it round and apply it each roller by roller as you go. 
It might be time consuming, but it definitely will save you wasting a load of that expensive lube. And it's a great way of inspecting your chain too for any damage, twisted or bent links, you know, something that could fail. Just apply it nice and easy as you go. Give it a bit of time to sink in. If you're using wet lube, then I suggest that you just leave it to penetrate that chain nicely and then just wipe away the excess with a rag. If you're using dry lube, now this stuff actually evaporates, so you shouldn't need to uh, be wiping any of that off. Just leave it to evaporate and you can hit the trails. But apart from that, that's it. Pretty simple, I've got a nice clean and lube chain ready to hit the trails for some fun. Looking after your chain is definitely super simple, but it's one of the major things you need to be doing on your e-bike for sure. But get involved in the comments box down below about how you go about it, what lube you use, your cleaner that you use, any tips for making that chain last a lot longer would definitely be uh, worthwhile here on EMB and we'd love to hear how you guys are doing it. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBM. Whilst you're there, check out the merch shop for all the new kit.